Hey everyone, this is Nitro. In this video, I am going to talk about the way to build Shafania, the cleaning queen of Kasukonsis. So, why do I call her a cleaning queen? Well... <laughs> しまし So yeah. I guess that defines her in a nutshell. She's like, I guess, a Japanese version of an ideal woman. She loves to clean and yet she's also a princess and she becomes the queen of Kakonsis. But in any case, let's talk about the way to build her. And the very first thing I should mention is the characters that are required to unlock her bonds. So, Shafaniel is actually pretty easy to get access to all her bonds. Her fourth bond actually comes from Almeda. So as since everyone starts with Almeda, you have her first four bonds just like that. As for her fifth and final bond, this one's pretty important since it increases intelligence. This one needs her twin, Angelina. So as long as you have Angelina and Shafaniel, uh, she's ready to be used. Now, with that said, Shafaniel as a character, she only becomes truly uh, usable at 4 or 5 stars. And she is optimal at 6 stars. So she is one of those characters that you need to bring up to 6 stars if you truly want to use her. And the reason for that is because of her talent, Magic Lineage. The talent's effect has two effects. Okay? The first one is Intelligence is increased up to a certain percentage based on a unit's current hit points. Okay? The percentage goes from 10% at 3 stars, 13% at 4 stars, 16% at 5 stars, and 20% int increase at 6 stars. Note that because this is an intelligence increase, it does not affect soldiers, because soldiers are based on attack. So in that sense, she is not like, let's say, Lena, whose magic damage increase of 30% affects soldiers as well. So Shafaniel does lack some ability to one-shot enemies due to this effect. However, the other effect of Magic Lineage is that whenever a skill is used to deal damage, the cooldown of the skill is reduced by a certain number of turns. Okay? At 3 stars, it's only 1 turn. At 4 and 5 stars, it becomes a 2 turn cooldown reduction. And then at 6 stars, it becomes a 3 turn cooldown reduction. So, it is this second effect of her talent that makes her a great mage. Because what it means is, at 4 and 5 stars, the 2 turn cooldown reduction means that Shafaniel can endlessly use her single target strike skill, Cleanse. While this skill may not necessarily one-shot targets, especially in PvP, in PvE, it usually does enough damage to one-shot most things. Especially if your Shafaino is at 5 stars and you know fully upgraded, fully bonded up and whatever. But at 6 stars, when the cooldown of skills is reduced by 3 turns, that's where she very, very much shines. Because a 3 turn cooldown reduction means that her AoE skills, which have a cooldown of 3, Desiccate and Demolish, will be usable every single turn. So she can endlessly toss out these AoEs. Now, keep in mind that these AoEs are the weaker AoEs. They have a 3 range and span of 3. So it's not like, let's say, Heaven Sanction, which has like a 5 span, but a cooldown of 5, right? Or let's say, Bozo's Earthquake or Lana's Black Hole. Those ones have, you know, a span of 4 with 3 range. But once again, their cooldown is 
five, five turns, as opposed to Shafania, who can endlessly use her skill. So that is why Shafaniel can be so good at six stars. All right, so with her talent covered, let's talk about Shafaniel's classes. And pretty much, if you start with Shafaniel, you're going to go from Mage to Saint to Empress initially, because you want to get access to her faction buff in case she faction buffs for you, as well as Heaven Sanction, which is incredibly useful in let's say, PvE content such as doing the goblin runs, right? Having an AoE blast like Heaven Sanction can be very, very useful. So you always go down this main line initially to get access to these skills. Getting the class mastery of Archmage and Wizard will first give her the class mastery stat bonuses, right? 12 in tier. Wizard will give the 25 in. So that would be 37 additional intelligence. And it'll also give her the Desiccate AoE skill, so you have Demolish and Desiccate to choose between. And finally, from Wizard, in my opinion, the skills aren't as useful. Reinforcements for healing and attack support. But these, so my opinion is these two skills aren't as useful, but attack support does have utility in PvP. So, with with her skills all mentioned, let's now talk about her skill combos. So, Shafaniel's one point skill is usually predefined, and it's always pretty much going to be Magic Defense Break. Because this skill allows her to, before battle, you have a 50% chance to reduce the enemy's magic defense by 25%, and it lasts one turn. This skill is what makes Shafaniel, in truth, able to potentially one shot targets because reducing the enemy's magic defense will allow her to hit that much harder with cleanse. And it'll also allow her soldiers to potentially do more damage as well. So magic defense break, if you bring cleanse, is pretty much a must. Reinforcements is the other option for one point skill that's useful. And generally speaking, it's not a skill you bring, in my opinion, uh, because you generally have a healer to heal up Shafaniel. But it can be brought, so I'm just leaving it there as an option, but most commonly it's going to be Magic Defense Break for the one-point skill. As for her two two-point skills, it really depends on A, her star level, B, what you're doing, and C, uh, whether you need to bring a faction buff or not. So, at four, so, if you're going to use Shafaniel, generally speaking, you're likely to have someone else bring the faction buff, rather than have her bring the faction buff herself, especially when she's at 4 and 5 stars. Because at 4 and 5 stars, you know, the cooldown of skills is only reduced by 2. So at that stage, you can choose, you generally choose to bring 2 AoEs, right? Desiccate and Demolish, so that she can endlessly toss out AoEs every single turn. That's the only way for her to do AoEs endlessly. You could also do, of course, Cleanse and one of the AoE skills, whether it's Desiccate or Demolish, it's up to you. And in that case, you know, you're more trying to single target kill, especially with Cleanse and Magic Defense Break, and then you have the AoE as the secondary attack. And this would be the PvP style, Shafaniel. Okay. And that assumes, of course, you let's say have Landius as the tank, whose faction buff will affect her. Or you have Luna, you know, who can faction buff, and then Shafania can toss out AoEs endlessly or use cleanse. Otherwise, though, you would probably, if you don't have anyone else to faction buff, in that case, she can't use AoEs endlessly. And in that situation, you'll probably do this kind of skill setup, where she's bringing the faction buff, she'll bring cleanse to single target strike enemies, and she'll bring magic defense break to hopefully one shot these enemies. So in this kind of build, you know, someone else will probably AoE the enemy or weaken them and then she'll finish them off with cleanse. And she'll be able to use cleanse every single turn. So that's the second style of Shafaniel at 4 or 5 stars. And then once she's at 6 stars though, with the cooldown of skills being reduced by 3, you pretty much always bring one AoE blast and then a magic defense break. because She can endlessly AoE, just like that. The last skill then depends on the situation. You may bring the faction buff, Goddess Glow. 
you may bring Cleanse, so that you can swap between a one-shot skill or the AoE skill as needed. And you may choose to bring, alternatively, Attack Support. And the reason to bring Attack Support, which increases damage dealt of two friendly units within two blocks by 15%, and gives the immunity to attack and int reduction as well as the effect that silence active skills, it applies multiple buffs on your allies, right? That's what the attack support does. And this is useful because in PvP, there seems to be a lot of skills that are used that remove buffs, right? For example, Shafino's Demolish dispels one buff, right? Other skills that are commonly used that dispel buffs is, for example, Joshua. Uh, Joshua, her, his Dark Demise dispels two buffs, right? If I bring up Chloe, although you don't see that many Chloe's with double class mastery yet, Chloe, her Star Glow dispels one buff. Right? So, and then there's, I think, other characters who dispel buffs, I believe, is, includes Leonhard. If I bring him up, and I think it's his Dark Emperor Sword. Yeah, Dark Emperor Sword dispels two buffs as well. So you can see, there's lots of things that dispel buffs. So Shafaniel, being able to apply buffs on your allies, can make it harder for your enemies to dispel you know, your critical buffs. It'll be luck-based, but let's be honest, PvP does have a luck-based element. So that's when attack support does become useful. Uh, and yeah, Shafaniel is one of those characters that can actually bring that two-point skill due to her talent. So, I've talked about the skill combos then, and now let's move on to her soldiers. So, her soldier boost initially starts off at 10% hit points, 10% attack increase, and 10% magic defense increase. Right? And her third bond increases defense and magic defense so it's a very defensive oriented bond right so that it would increase it by 15 percent defense 15 percent magic defense and it means that her final soldier boost is actually 20 percent hit points 20 percent attack 25 percent defense increase and a 35 percent magic defense increase which is a very odd split when you think about it the 20% attack increase does definitely doesn't compare to, let's say, Lena, who has 40% attack increase, right? In addition, Shafaniel's soldiers are fairly limited in their attack increase options, right? She doesn't get sorceresses that have the 40% attack increase. With that said, Shafaniel does have access to wizards, right? And fully upgraded wizards increase the attack by, I believe it's 30%. Uh, mine aren't fully upgraded yet, but I'm pretty sure this does, yeah, so it goes up to 30%. It's 24%, 27% at level 9, and 30% at level 10. So, while it's not as good as a 45% attack increase of sorcerers is, 30% is still pretty solid. So, but with that said, once again, her bond not increasing the attack by 40% can be a limiting factor. So, let's talk about her best soldiers then. Soldiers she gets access to from the training ground is the Shrine Maiden and the Sky Archer. Okay. And these are two of her best soldiers right there. Shrine Maidens, right, reducing physical damage by 70% or 75% at level 10 is huge. It makes your character's survivability ridiculous as long as they're at full hit points, of course. As for Sky Archers, Sky Archers does do physical damage rather than magic damage. However, the reason to bring Sky Archers is that terrain has no effect on mobility. So, this is a huge bonus for Shafaniel, allowing her to move through tiles that she would not otherwise not be able to move through. And that's why you would bring Sky Archers. Using Sky Archers, you generally do not do Cleanse. Instead, you bring an AoE skill. But because of the Sky Archer talent, they're definitely 
they definitely have very high utility. So that's Shrine Maidens and Sky Archers. And her last soldier option is, as I mentioned, the Wizards. Because Wizards, while being a basic unit, do increase attack by 30% at level 10. So Wizards, in a cleanse style Shafaniel, have utility in increasing, in basically improving her potential to one-shot enemies. So those are her three top tier soldiers, right? Shrine Maidens to tank, Sky Archers for mobility and AoE, and Wizards for cleanse strikes. Of note though, I should mention, Shrine Maidens being Holy Class do hard counter demons. So in PvE content, you could use Shrine Maidens rather than Wizards for some content. It all depends on what you're facing. So with her three soldiers covered, let's talk about equipment and enchants, right? And let's first talk about the gear before I talk about the enchants. Gear, Shafaniel, being a mage, she runs pretty much the standard mage gear, right? And standard mage gear, I have equipped on both Liana and Lena. For the weapon, you really want Blue Moon or Red Moon. For the armor, the best one is Tenyo's Robe because it gives 10% hit points and can dispel enemy buffs and inflict random debuffs. But the main thing is the additional hit points for survivability. For her uh, helmet, she actually has quite a few choices and I'll talk about those choices afterwards. So I'm just gonna skip that for now. And for her accessory, it's definitely going to be Holy Ring because of the immunity to silence. Since Shafaniel is all about using skills, immunity to silence is clutch for her. Plus, Holy Ring is a key item. You can choose to replace this Holy Ring with, let's say, uh, what's it called? Brace, uh, Swordsmith? Swordsmith Medal or Bracer Emblem, because that piece of gear, if I bring it up, does give Immunity to fixed damage and effects stat silence active skills while boosting all stats by 5. This is very usable too. But let's be honest, every character wants a Swordsmith Medal for PvP. Every single one. So I don't think you're going to have that many. So you're more likely to have a Holy Ring to spare for Shafaniel than a Swordsmith Medal. But the Swordsmith Medal Immunity to fixed damage can be very useful in keeping your Shafaniel alive. I should just mention that. Alright, so let's talk about the useful helmets for Shafaniel then, now that I've talked about uh, her other three pieces of gear. So to do that, I am actually going to bring up the Google spreadsheet created by Black Cat. And just give me a moment to bring that up. And here we are. Okay, so first, actually I should also mention weapon. Right? Because Shafaniel is about doing AoEs and so on, she wants maximum intelligence, and the maximum intelligence comes from really Blue Moon or Red Moon. They both give plus 10% int, right? Red Moon is slightly better since it gives 5% additional hit points as opposed to 5% magic defense, but Blue Moon is very acceptable if you don't have a Red Moon. And other than, the, other than Blue Moon and Red Moon though, your Shafaniel can use a Miracle Staff because Miracle Staff increases AoE damage by 15%. And so if you're doing an AoE Shafaniel, Miracle Staff is great because you do more damage and you can apply a random debuff to the enemies. So it does depend on what kind of skill set you're running, right? So you're gonna choose either one of these though. Blue Moon, Red Moon, or yeah. Blue Moon, Red Moon, or Miracle Staff. Okay. So, we're now going to talk about the helmets for Shafaniel. And here is where Shafaniel has a wide variety of options because it all depends on how you want to make use of her and what helms you have available, right? Shafaniel does kill targets with her AoE strikes. And if she does kill targets, Odin's Battle Helm can be the key item in this situation because when eliminating an enemy, you dispel 5 buffs from one enemy within 3 blocks after taking action. Right. This effect can be triggered by AoE kills, plus Odin's Battle Helm is definitely a viable option for Shafaniel for PvP. 
other than the Odin's Battle Helm, you can always bring a Soul Stealer Headdress. Be a Soul Stealer Headdress, where after taking action, you have a 50% chance to silence active skills of one enemy within three blocks of her. Last is three turns. Since Shafaniel has three range on her skills, she's always pretty much going to be within three blocks of the enemies. So Soul Stealer Headdress has use, for sure. In addition to these two, she can definitely use a Yajur Soul Reef because that gives 10% hit points, which is a survivability item. And after taking action, you can grant the Sage's Hat effect on an ally. So Yajur Soul Reef is, is very usable for Shafaniel because once again, she's going to generally be AOE blasting next to a tank. So this Yajur Soul Reef can buff up your tank with the uh, Sage's Hat buff. And finally, she can also use the Tenyo's Headdress. Like the Yatrasil Reef, it gives 10% hit point boost, but it also has an effect of after taking action, you have a 100% chance to get one random buff to one friendly unit within two blocks. So, whether, so all four of these are definitely usable items for Shafaniel. And I should also note that Shafaniel does get an exclusive helmet. And her exclusive helmet is the Crown of Kakonsis, where after taking action, you have a 30% chance to increase skill range by one and increase the AoE span by one, and it lasts one turn. This exclusive especially makes her absolutely amazing, okay? Because her real limitation right now is her lack of range and lack of mobility to actually get into AoE range. So when she gets this item, she becomes truly, truly usable. When is the Crown of Cacosis released in global? Well, let's take a look and see if it's been placed into the schedule on the Language and Mobile Hero Reference Sheet. Let's take a look. So what we're looking for is Shafaniel's Helm, right? And I currently see, let's see, there's Lanford and Freya. There is... It doesn't seem to be anytime soon, looking at this. Because I don't see Shafinio's helm anywhere at this time. So... Sadly, it doesn't look like it's coming out anytime soon. Uh, not for the next three months at least. But it is good to note that when it is released, it will be huge for Shafaniel in highly improving her utility. All right, so I've talked about her gear now. And the last step is to talk about the enchant that you want to use on Shafaniel and the enchant value you should be aiming for. So let me just jump back into the game to talk about that and demonstrate it. So as a mage, she will be pretty much just like Lana is what you want the enchant values on. Uh, but Shafaniel's enchant, the one you want is actually to be Breeze because Breeze increases damage dealt by 10% and after taking action, you have a 30% chance to increase your mobility by two. That mobility increase, raising her mobility to 5, will be huge for Shafaniel. So Breeze is her best enchant for sure, without doubt. Even though things like magic can increase damage dealt, her, her weakness is her lack of mobility. So Breeze is her best enchant. In terms of enchant values, what you should be aiming for is... This is pretty much the ideals. Okay, For the weapon, you definitely want 15% intelligence. Ideally with a second value that adds plus int value. Accessory, you'll definitely want plus 10 int, ideally. Right? As for the armor and helmet, on both of those, the ideal is pretty much plus 15% hit points and plus 5% int. The third stat would ideally be even more hit points or int, or even uh, let's say plus magic defense percentage. But these are ideal values that, you know, they're, you're not that likely to get these ideal values in general. So, realistically, for example, 
you do want the plus 15% int, and 12% 12, 12 int plus 10 int is basically 15% int. Yeah. Uh, if I keep rerolling this, it would be to aim for 15% int with a plus int value. Okay. Holy Ring has 7% int with plus 14 int, which is pretty much 10% once again. It, in fact, it's a bit over 10%, I believe. Yeah. The third value was magic defense, but whatever. Third value here was hit points, but once again, whatever. As for the Tetanus Robe and Dark Crown, I tried to aim for hit points and, inc and int increase, which I got. The third stat was plus 10% magic defense, uh, yeah, which helps increase my land and survivability, which is fine. Ideally, though, if this would be 15% hit points, you know, 5% int, but that's not what I have right now. And the Dark Crown, you can see here, there's hit point increase some int increase, and some magic defense increase, which is very much optional. So you can see that practically I have, I don't have those max values, but I have some pretty good ones anyways. Okay. And that pretty, the thing I should mention as a final note though, is Lana's enchant is magic rather than breeze, which I kind of regret, but you know, I did the magic enchant early on, before I realized just how critical Breeze actually is. So yeah, that pretty much concludes this video, which covers everything I wanted to say about Shafinio. So I hope you found this information useful. And on that note, Nitro out. <laughs>